Hey class, welcome back. Today we are talking about ancient Mesopotamia, the, the Babylonian Empire. All right, it's moving, moving away from the Akkadian Empire that we did the other day. And uh, with the Babylonian Empire comes King Hammurabi. And something he's very famous for is the Code of Hammurabi, which were written laws. It was the first time in the history that any laws had been written. And uh, as you can see here, it, it, Babylonia, or Babylon was very famous for, for all kinds. They had the hanging gardens on there. It probably would have been a very beautiful place. Uh, hanging gardens coming off the buildings. They had their ziggurat over here as, as every, every major city that was in Mesopotamia had their own primary ziggurat. But one thing that, that we're really going to talk to about here and then next week we're going to talk about it is the Code of Hammurabi, which were the laws, the first written laws uh for anything it's the first time laws have been written down in the history of the world so uh all right here we go uh after the fall of the Cadian empire you know rose two new empires there were the babylonians in the south and then you had the syrians to the north but today we're talking about the babylonians the babylonians were first to form an empire that would encompass all of mesopotamia not just sumer like the Cadians did they encompassed all of mesopotamia is Mesopotamia. After the fall of the Akkadian Empire, two new empires rose to power. There were the Babylonians in the south and the Assyrians to the north. The Babylonians were the first to form an empire that would encompass all of Mesopotamia. So, with the rise of the Babylonians came King Hammurabi. This is King Hammurabi here. After the fall of the Akkadian Empire, the city was taken over and settled by the Amorites. In 1792, King Hammurabi took control of the throne and he was powerful and capable liver he wanted to rule more than just the city of babylon rise of the babylonians and king hammurabi the city of babylon had been a city state in mesopotamia for many years after the fall of the Akkadian empire the city was taken over and settled by the amorites the city began its rise to power in 1792 bc when king hammurabi took the throne he was a powerful and capable leader who wanted to rule more than just the city of Babylon. So, so not long after becoming king, you know, he began to conquer other city states. All right. And uh, as he conquered other city states, if you see them, I mean, it became huge. Uh, all of Mesopotamia, it, it first to encompass all of Mesopotamia. And within just a few years, he'd conquered all of Mesopotamia, just like I said including much of the Assyrian lands to the north. So uh, he had great aspirations, all right? He, he was very determined and wanted to get this done. He wanted to rule more than just Babylon. King Hammurabi continued. Not long after becoming king, Hammurabi began to conquer other city-states in the area. Within a few years, Hammurabi had conquered all of Mesopotamia, including much of Assyrian lands to the north. So, uh, under Hammurabi's rule, the city of Babylon became the most powerful city in the world. And it was located on the banks of the Euphrates River. All right, uh, the Euphrates River, we've talked about the Euphrates River and the Tigris River. And the city was a major trade hub, all right? And it also became the largest city in the world at the time with as many as 200,000 people living there. And it speaks, that's a big city. That's bigger than a lot of cities today. Not the major, major cities, but it's bigger than some of the cities in North Carolina today. The city of Babylon. Under Hammurabi's rule, the city of Babylon became the most powerful city in the world. Located on the banks of the Euphrates River, the city was a major trade hub, bringing together new ideas and products. Babylon also became the largest city in the world at the time, with many as 200,000 people living there at its peak. So at the center of the city was a large temple called a ziggurat. If you look right here, you can see the ziggurat. Uh, and, and it was huge, okay? Uh, it was something like a pyramid, the ziggurat, where we talked about it earlier, with a flat top. And archaeologists think that it was 300 feet tall, and that's huge. All right, that's over, uh, I don't know, 30 stories or something, something like that. So... Uh, there was a wide street leading from the gates to the center of the city, and it was also famous for its hanging gardens, which I showed you at the very beginning slide. 
and towers and artwork. And uh, like I said, I think it would have been amazing to see that. The city of Babylon continued. At the center of the city was a large temple called a ziggurat. This temple looked something like a pyramid with a flat top, and archaeologists think that it was 300 feet tall. There was a wide street leading from the gates to the center of the city. The city was also famous for its gardens, palaces, towers, and artwork. It would have been an amazing sight to see. All right, so Hammurabi's Code, which we're going to go more into detail about Hammurabi's Code on our next lesson, but it was established. It established firm laws. All right, there were about 282 laws, and all these were recorded on clay tablets or tall pillars of stone that were called steels, all right, or steels. And uh, you can see it right here. These are the laws written down from Hammurabi's Code. And uh, like I said, we'll go more into it, into detail about it on our next lesson. Hammurabi's Code. King Hammurabi established firm laws called Hammurabi's Code. This was the first time in history that the law was written down. It was recorded on clay tablets and tall pillars of stones called steels. Remember, it was the first time in history that these laws were written down. All right, so it consisted of 282 laws, and uh, they were quite specific, but, you know, they meant guidelines or to similar circumstances. You know, there were laws governing commerce, wages, trade, rental rates, the sale of slaves, there were laws governing criminal behavior, describing the penalties for stealing or damaging property. And there were even laws about divorce and marriage and adoption. So all these laws were, were in effect. All 282 laws, all these, he had laws for just about everything. Just like we do now, like we do nowadays. Hammurabi's Code continued. Hammurabi's Code consisted of 282 laws. Many of them were quite spe specific, but were meant as guide guidelines would be used in similar circumstances. There were laws governing commerce such as wages, trade, rental, rates, and the sale of slaves. There were laws governing criminal behavior describing the penalties for stealing or damaging property. There were even laws governing adoption, marriage, and divorce. All right, so, you know, with every empire, every empire we talk about, whether it's Rome, Egypt, one of the Mesopotamian empires, Eventually, they're going to fall, and that's what happened to Babylon. And Babylon eventually rose back up, I and mean, it was called the Neo-Babylonian Empire, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. I just want you to remember the first Babylonian Empire, and, uh, and in 1595, the Kassites conquered Babylon, and, uh, and it wasn't until 612 BC that Babylonia once again rose to power as the ruler of the empire over Mesopotamia. And it was called the Neo-Babylonian Empire, like I said. But the, it, eventually, all empires fall. Fall of Babylon. After Hammurabi died, his sons took over. However, they were not strong leaders, and soon Babylon grew weak. In 1595, the Kassites conquered Babylon. They would rule for 400 years. Later, the Assyrians would take over. It wasn't until 612 BC that Babylonia once again rose to power as the ruler of the empire over Mesopotamia. So it was almost the second a, Babylonian empire is also is called the Neo Babylonian Empire. So it was almost a thousand years before the second Babylonian Empire took over because it was in 1595 BC that they, that they uh, the Kassites conquered Babylon. All right, so let's do our comprehension questions. Who were the first to form an empire that encompassed all of Mesopotamia? Was it A, the Sumerians, B, the Akkadians, or C, the Babylonians? It was C, the Babylonians. That's who we talked about today. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number two, who took over the throne in 1792 B.C.? A, King Hammurabi, B, Sargon the Great, or C, Naram Sin? It was... A King Hammurabi, he was one that took over the uh, took over the throne, and he wound up conquering all of Mesopotamia, and then writing the code of uh, the code of Hammurabi, which were a bunch of laws. We have a winner. What became the largest city in the world? A Gastonia, B Babylon, or C New York? What became the largest city in the world at the time? It was C or B Babylon. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner.
that line over 200,000 people were in it. Uh, what was the center of what was at the center of Babylon? A a ziggurat, B a garden, or C a pool? It is A a ziggurat was at the center. It was over 300 feet tall, which is huge, about 30 stories. Uh, and, and ziggurats, remember, they were temples to their gods, whatever god their primary god was. Ding ding ding! We have a winner. Number five, what were the laws established called? The laws that Hammurabi established, what were they called? Were A, Mr. Sean's Code, B, Hammurabi's Code, or C, Laws? They were called B, Hammurabi's Code. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. All right, class, that is all for, for, this, for this week, week four. Be sure to go on your Google Slides on Schoology. Go in, hit submit, go through your Google Slides, answer the comprehension questions that we just went over here, and then submit them on Schoology so you get credit for it. Uh, and uh, I will see you next week. We will be talking about the Hammurabi's Code next week, and then we will talk about the Persian Empire, and we will be finished with the ancient Mesopotamia unit. So, uh, all right. Everyone have a good, have a good weekend.